We are God's Church of Love. This is Saturday. We meet weekly and we are going to deal with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's a difference between the gifts and the fruit. Fruits of righteousness are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And the fruits of the Holy Spirit are the characteristics of God. Love, mercy, joy, peace, long-suffering, temperance, which is self-control. All of that is an example of fruits of righteousness. That's what the Holy Spirit does when he comes in us. He changes our nature. All right. So we get that. That's, that's, that's an aside. Now we're going to get to the main course, which is the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to start by reading Ephesians chapter 4. All right. <clears throat> I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now, what I want to say to you is, I'm just going to, I'm going to chat on this part for a minute. You see the different gifts that are there. All of these gifts are given by the Holy Spirit. When God, you know, whether you were preordained or whether he gave it after you gave your heart to the Lord, however it goes, his gifts and callings are without repentance. Now, many of you are still trying to find your way and find your position in the kingdom of God. Some of you have multiple gifts. Some of you have the fivefold ministry of all of the above that we just read about. But the bottom line is the gifts are not given to make you look good. The gifts are not given to, to boost your ego and make you feel special. You are no more special with five or six gifts than the other person is with one gift. And that's the thing we have to remember. There are no big eyes and no little U's in the kingdom, as long as we love with a pure heart through the Holy Ghost, there will be no partiality, which means special treatment. But we are all being developed into leaders. 
it's very obvious this group is a group of leaders. And I want you to be, to start seeking God about your callings, your giftings, your elections, all the things God wants to do in you, with you, and through you. And while you're seeking God for all of that, be mindful of your walk with the Lord. Be mindful of not allowing the little foxes to creep in and spoil your vine. Because you want to be a channel for the Lord. In other words, you want to be that, that sterilized water hose. I don't care if you pastor, preach, sing, teach, counsel, exhort, prophesy, speak, and I don't care what you're doing. If you're laying on hands and people are getting miraculously healed. The bottom line is you do not want your gift contaminated. And these are the different ways you can contaminate what you do for God. Sin, attitude, unforgiveness, lack of faith, complaining, griping, strife arguing and debate. It's a whole lot of ways we, and then, you know, all out sin, a whole lot of ways we can contaminate. We must guard the gift that God has given us. Now, check this out. When you are watching a doctor go into a surgery room, and this is what I want you to think of. When I think of Peter and I think of Lynn and I think of Aretha and and Rashad and Davina and all the people that are in our group, Edith and my baby sister. I think of all you guys and the giftings that God has put on you. I think of Andrea and Marlene and all these guys that are part of our group, whether they're with us right now or not. And this is what comes to my mind. Picture a surgeon. This is what you want to be like when you're operating in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Number one, you got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Number two, you got to be baptized in the Holy Ghost for some of the other gifts to move as well. But one thing I do want to say to you, do not stipulate to anyone, I got to say this before I go on with the surgeon, do not stipulate that you must have one gift in order to know that you're filled with the Holy Ghost. This is why I say that. Because even the Bible says, do all speak in tongues, do all prophesy, do all do this, do all do that. Well, the rhetorical question, the answer is no, of course not. And for, for a variety of reasons, not that we can't, but for a variety of reasons, which I'm not gonna take time to go into right now. But it's not always a fault of a person. It just, it just doesn't happen for everybody. So what I want to say to you is, even though the gifts are available, I may operate more in the gift of exhortation. Lynn may operate more in the gift of tongues. You hear what I'm saying? Aretha may operate more in the gift of healing. So you never know what the gifts are going to be. Davina may operate more in the gift of prophesying. Or Peter may operate more in the gift of pastoring. You don't know what it is. The bottom line is, as God begins to show you, if you keep your life spotless, as spotless as the power that lies within you, you will be a mighty vessel for God to use. Now listen, picture this. Picture yourself as a water hose. We'll get to the surgeon in a minute. Picture yourself as a water hose. The water hose, you just bought it from the store. You want it nice and pure, so you run some bleach through it and make sure that it's sterilized and all of that because you're also going to be drinking from that water hose. You're going to be filling buckets of water for other people with the water hose that they're going to drink. So you want the water to be as pure as possible, and you're getting the water from a pure source. So what happens if somebody takes that water hose, unscrews it, takes it to their yard, and they're using it to do all kind of craziness with it. They want to cipher somebody's gasoline. They want 
to, you know, use it as a, as a tool for something that is not really meant for. And all kind of dirt and contaminants are getting into that hose. Well, nobody, including you, nobody's going to want to use that hose again. You're going to want to just go get a new one because you don't know what has gone through that hose. Now, this is the way the world sees us. They look at us. They look at Edith. They look at me. They look at Rashad. They look at us and they wonder, hmm, is that real or is it Memorex? Right, because they don't know if we are a pure hose or a contaminated one. So when they're looking at us, they don't know if they want to feed off of us or not because they've seen so many unreasonable facsimiles out there playing the role of being a so-called born-again Christian. Now, here you got, here are some of the contaminants you can have in your life that can spoil God's feast of charity. Lying, sin, complaining, giving place to anger or giving place to wrath, jealousy, envy. Now, if you want to know what all of those are, you go to Galatians chapter 5, which will show you the difference, the works of the flesh versus the works of the spirit. And I'm going to go to it and read it quickly because some of you have not read Galatians. And I want to make sure that you know exactly what I'm talking about, because if we're going to learn what it takes and what it means to be a pure, clean vessel of honor. We need to see the comparison. All right. So we're going to go to Galatians chapter five. All right. Verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So what he's saying is keep your water holes clean and pure. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things ye would. Listen, listen, listen. That is a key sentence right there. So that ye cannot do the things ye would. If you're walking with a broken leg, if you have an infection up and down your thigh, if you got infection in your blood, you cannot function to your fullest capacity because something's wrong with you. You have been weakened by infection. You have been sickened by disease. You're tired because your body is using all its energy trying to clean you out and heal you. You don't want your life to be encumbered with mess, with clutter, with the cares of the world, with the sins of the flesh. So listen to what it says. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary, the opposite, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Let me add, if you could. All right. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. And of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not, shall not, shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, here it is, here's the fruit, characteristics of God, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. You notice love is the bottom line. That's the first thing mentioned because God is love. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, which is self-control. Against such, there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in, in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Now, let's go back. I just want you to see the difference between fruits 
and gifts. And why you don't want your fruits contaminated, why you don't want your gifts contaminated. Now, let's get back to the surgeon. Here you have the surgeon. The surgeon has gone through his material. He knows he's got major complicated surgery to do. So he has done everything to prepare. He got a good night's sleep. He's got all his cleaning that he's got to do, his sterilizing. When he gets to the hospital, he changes into the, into the surgical scrub. Everything he's got on is sterile. All the instruments on the table have been prepared by the staff. Everything's sterilized. The room is sterilized. Everything is clean. Why is that important? Because when you go into the room, you have to make sure when you're going to cut somebody open that you keep the atmosphere, every instrument, everything as clean as possible. Because if there is any impurity, infection, death, any of that can happen. Complications can arise. People have gotten blood poisoning from staph infections in the hospital and they have died from it when nothing was wrong with them in their blood, but something unclean got loose and got in them during surgery. Now, what I want to say to you is that's why in these last days, the Holy Spirit is going to start pouring out to the same extent that sin and the demonic starts getting loosed and conjured up more and more. Grace does much more, much more bound. And the Holy Spirit is going to start really empowering the body of Christ because this is God's last ditch effort to pull in the harvest. So we must do our very best to stay as clean of a vessel as possible because we can be used inadvertently by the enemy when we mishandle God's people when we mishandle an unsaved, broken vessel that needs to be saved, purified, cleansed, healed, and made whole. And we can end up spoiling the very thing God sent us out to do. And that's why people die on the operation table, because not all hospital staff is always careful about sterilization, purification, and cleanliness. We must be. We cannot afford. See, a person could lose their life and still be with the Lord. But we don't want to make a person lose their soul because of us. We don't want to do that. So we have to be careful to live a holy life. Okay, we know that. Now let's move on. I just had to put that in there to make sure everybody gets that. All right, now we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. This is not going to be a long message because I want to make sure some of you, if God has given you something to add, I want you to say on. All right, let's see. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Starting at verse one. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant you know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, these are there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Before I go any further, let me caution you. While you're seeking God for your giftings and your callings, do not, I repeat, do not imitate somebody you admire. Don't imitate anybody. Be yourself. Don't try to talk, walk, quack, or waddle like anyone. You may see a speaker that you just love to listen to all day long. You never get tired of them. And you sit there and you want to be like them. No. I'll tell you who you be like. You be like Jesus and be like yourself. God did not call you to be them. He already has them. 
You be yourself. All right. I just want to say that because a lot of times we compare ourselves with other people and we start imitating, emulating. Yeah. All right. Uh, verse four. <clears throat> now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. <clears throat> Excuse me. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit to another the gifts of healing you notice it says the gifts of healing by the same spirit let me let me stop here let me park the car on the curb right here listen there are different people with different anointings i can tell you for a fact from the results i've seen my anointing tends to be in limbs l I-M-B-S, limbs, arms, and legs, especially the legs. Most of the time when I pray for anybody's legs, it's instant success, instant. Now I could pray for all the kind of stuff and you know somebody else might have to back up that prayer because the results aren't the same. But when I pray for legs, it, there's always some instant result, the same day within the same hour or two, it's instant. Now, there are other people who have an anointing when they pray for eyes or when they pray for organ parts of the body, the function of the body, the vitals of the body. When they pray for different parts of the body or even the whole body, the person gets an instantly healed. There are instant results. That's why, and here's the other part <laughs> that you know I operate in all the time, gifts of inner healing. There's psychological healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing. Right. Now, what I want you to know is I don't care what has happened in your life. This is a quick note on the side. I don't care if you've been molested, raped, uh, ripped off, if you've been jacked up, toe up from the flow up by other people's misdeeds. God can heal every single offense, remove every single hurt, enable you to forgive every single perpetrator and move on and live your life as free as a jaybird. I'm telling you the truth, I'm telling you from experience, not just the word, but I live that. All right, now let's move on. <clears throat> All right, to another faith by the same spirit, to another, the gifts of healing. All right. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, divers kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Now, but all these worketh that one and the self-same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will, not as you will, as he will. Now listen, listen before we get bogged down because a lot of denominations get bogged down in tongues. Number one, the Holy Spirit gives the gift of wisdom. The Holy Spirit gives the gift of administration. The Holy Spirit gives the gift, you hear me, of knowledge, word of knowledge. The Holy Spirit gives the gift of healing. The Holy Spirit gives the working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, diverse kinds of tongues. To I mean, all of this is done by the Holy Spirit. So before anybody puts you in a trick bag, baby cakes, if God is using you through the Holy Spirit to do any of these, you've got any of these gifts, baby cakes, guess what? You got the Holy Ghost, whether you speak in tongues or no. As you use the gift that you know you got, there are many times God begins to add other gifts to you as you continue to walk with the Lord. 
So don't see where you are as the end of the road. You know how you talked about the talents? The one that used all the talents to benefit his his master, the master gave him that much more. And the one that didn't do anything but bury his talent, he took from him and gave it to the one with the most. So he will, the Bible says, if you are faithful in little things, he will make you master over much. So be faithful wherever you are in the gift you're in. Be faithful in it. Constantly be willing to offer it to God. Be instant in season and out of season. When it's convenient and when it's not convenient, be instant to use the gifts God has already given you. And as you use the gifts, covet more gifts and ask God for more gifts and that's okay. But use what you got. Don't sit on it. All right. Now, Help me, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Now, um, I'm going to move on because that's going in a different direction. And we'll cover that when the Lord says do that. But right now, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't think about. And, and this is the main, you're going to laugh when I say this. When I asked the Lord what he wanted me to preach on, this was it right here. So I had to get through the others first to make sure we laid the foundation for this one. Because this one, I think God is showing us this because many of you who have not yet done so are going to start experiencing speaking in tongues. And those of you who have been doing so are going to learn with more clarity what is decent and what is in order with the gift of tongues and interpretation. Now listen, I'm going to let the word do the preaching today. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Follow after charity. You notice the, the common denominator with all these gifts is charity. All right. Follow after charity. I got to do it, Lord. Just give me a second. Let's go back to the previous chapter. Verse 1 and 2. Verse 3. 1 to 3. First Corinthians, and then we'll go to 14. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. I ain't nothing but a bunch of noise. And you know what they say about empty cans? It's past two cents. Empty cans make a lot of noise. When the can is full, it doesn't make as much noise. You notice that. So if you're empty and you're speaking in tongues, you're, you're going to be like sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal because you ain't got no love in your heart. You're just showing out just because you got a gift. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing, zippo, nada. All right, now let's go on to the next chapter. I just had to cover that. All right, now you guys can read what real love is from that verse on. That's the love chapter. All right. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. Yes, we ought to desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth, that's talking in your native language, speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. He can't edify anybody else. Nobody knows what he's saying. But he that prophesieth edifies the church. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesy. 
for greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret. But the church, that the church may receive edifying. So interpretation must follow tongues or we zip the lip. All right, because that's between you and God if there's no interpretation. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine and even things without life giving sound? whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? for ye shall speak into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Even so, even so ye, forasmuch as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is un fruitful. Mm. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Else when thou shalt bless with the spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say amen at the giving of thanks? seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest. In other words, here you are praying and, and speaking in tongues and praying and glorifying God, and we're all sitting around like, okay, so what are they saying? Well, we can't get into it because we don't know what you're saying. And it won't benefit us. Benefits you, but not us. For thou verily givest thanks well, but the other the other people around you, they're not glory, they're not edified because there's no understanding. Just breaking that down. Okay. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Howbeit in malice be children, but in understanding be men. So what he's saying there, yeah, now, you, uh, you know, don't act like kids. But now when it comes to malice and foul attitudes and all that, yeah, 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 I want you to be like kids. Be innocent to that crap. But I want you to be men when it comes to understanding. In the law, it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that will, they will not hear me, saith the Lord. Wherefore tongues are for a sign. Listen to this. Not to them that believe. See, a lot of us like to do the tongue thing amongst the believers. It's a sign not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them who believe. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, I'm going to stop there. See, basically the next verse is just talking about how a person who's an unbeliever comes into church and people are up there talking in tongues and it's like, wow, these folks are mad. They're crazy. It just looks like chaos to them. They don't get it. All right. So um, it, it's an unlearned or an unbeliever. They'll say they're mad. Okay. 
But if you prophesy, verse 24, and there come in one that believeth not or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all. Wow. Okay. Anyway, so the bottom line is you want to make sure that you operate in the gifts according to scripture. Because I've seen it when I was a little kid, I visited a church. I don't even remember where it was. And I, I mean, there were about five or six people up there. They're just going on and on and on and on and on. Heads are jerking, the hands are whipping. They're, they're, they're getting the quickening of the Holy Spirit. And I'm sitting up there looking at them like, wow, these folks are weird. This is bizarre. It made me uncomfortable. I don't know what to do with that. There was nobody interpreting. They were all just, oh, I hate to say it like this. It's going to sound very crass, but understand what I mean. Take it in the spirit in which I mean it. They were basically uh, massaging their egos because they were all caught up in the ego trip of speaking in tongues. And you'd be surprised how many Christians take a massive amount of pride and operating in the, in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It ain't their gift. <laughs> it's a gift that God gave. It's not their own ability, but you would think they went to college and earned their degree because of the pride they take in it and how much they abuse the privilege and misuse the gift. So that is for us to know this is how that is handled. All right. Now, when you get along with God, or, I mean, there are times when somebody's praying online here with us and I feel the tongues coming on me, I'll mute my mic so I can pray in tongues. But I'm not going to let you hear it because they ain't going to do you no good. They ain't going to do nothing for you. It ain't for you. It's for God. Got it? So if you sing, if you worship, if you praise, if you have a word and God gives it to you in tongues, there has to be some kind of knowing in you that it will be followed by an interpretation before you share it publicly. All right. Anyway, so that is, is dealing with one of those gifts. During Tuesday, probably we'll cover another gift or two or three of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and start delving in. But I want to go also to the gift of discerning of spirits. And then I'm going to, I'm going to wind up just for the sake of time. You want to have the gift of discerning of spirits. The reason I say that is because the gift of discerning of spirits is like an alarm. It's like a, an, inner, <clears throat> an inner alarm that goes off inside of you. Let me share what I mean. Aretha and I were talking on the phone the other night about church leaders and how, you know, they gave us the creeps. And when I was like four years old, I was staying with my godparents while my mother was in the insane asylum. And they took me to this little, you know, storefront church down the road that they, you know, like going to. We just walked there. It was in the same block as the block that we lived on. And I was okay with going to church. But this is the part I hated. I hated, 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 hated with all my inner being. The man would take my hand when he was greeting everybody coming in and greeting them going out. He'd take my hand and he kissed the back of my hand. And I would want to rub it. I would want to sanitize it. I want to go wash my hand. I felt nasty when that man kissed the back of my hand. Now, I didn't know. At the time, I didn't understand what that was. But see, there is an innate thing that God puts in kids a lot of times to give them an inner warning. And I knew something was wrong with that man. I just didn't know what. But as, as I grew older, I recognized when I look back in retrospect that he was probably a pedophile because I got the creeps. I felt unclean. I felt like his, 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 his attraction, there was something that made him want to touch me. And I, it, 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 everything felt unclean about it. Now, I have had situations where I either sensed an evil spirit in my house and I rebuked it or, you know, like when my sister was going to commit suicide and I felt the evil and I saw the demon in my house and I started rebuking. Then the Holy Spirit switched tracks on me and had me start praying in on my sister for divine protection that she would not hurt herself. 
And then God backed it up by giving me a dream in the middle of the night, letting me know that my sister was contemplating suicide. When I called her, she sounded fine, but that was after the fact. After the third call, she confessed to me that at 5.30 a.m., the very minute that the demon showed up in my house and I saw him discerning of spirits, she had just agreed with a demonic voice that told her to end it. And everything in her shut down. All her feelings just went to nothing. And she started planning her demise. And then as God would have it, this baby Christian that didn't know what the heck she was doing, but had the gift of discerning of spirits, battled a demon. And she ended up feeling like a football player jumped in her chest and all her emotions rushed back in her, her love for her kids, her desire to live, her emotional pain, everything jumped back in her chest. And God gave her a vision of her kids freaking out, finding her dead body in the kitchen. And she said, I can't do that to them. I can't do that to them. It'll mess them up for life. And that's what saved her life. The gift of discerning of spirits. That's where it started. So I'm telling you, that's one thing you must have. Ask God. If you don't think you got it, continually seek God for the gift of discerning of spirits. You will be able to protect your children. You'll be able to protect yourself. You'll be able to stop things from jumping off that could call that could wreak havoc in your lives. You can stay disconnected from people that don't mean you any good. It's a whole lot of things. You can see demons and ward them off and get them out your house. A whole lot of things you can do with the gift of discerning of spirits. We'll deal with that on Tuesday. But I just want to share with you, these gifts are important. God gave them to us for the edifying of the church, for our protection, for our growth, for our enlightenment, for revelation, and we must seek God. And now that we've said all that, I ask you to pray now in a moment of silence, and I will pray out loud. You ask God to fill you and baptize you in the Holy Ghost. And we're going to have a time of silence. Don't be uncomfortable in the silence. Edith, if you feel to play the piano while we're doing it, fine. If you don't feel to play it, fine. But I just want everybody to be, to know this is not a time to talk. This is your time to ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit, with all the gifts that he's got to give you, to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and empower you for service in Jesus' name and to give you a personal experience and encounter with him. Now I'm turning my volume up in case Edith wants to play the piano, but this is between us individually and God. Pray to God. I'll pray for you while you pray. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would pour your spirit out on each and every one that's in our group. In Jesus' name I pray. Father, we're asking for the early and latter rain. We're asking, Lord, to pour out your spirit so your sons and daughters can prophesy, dream dreams, have visions, do all kind of things in the spirit realm. And I ask you, Father, to empower us. Empower us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Purify us, Father. Move on us by the power of your Holy Ghost through revelations, through the powerful gifts, in Jesus' name. Pour your spirit out on us, Lord. Bless us, Father. Go on and play. Bless us, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, and we are waiting on you as Edith plays in silence. applicable mm -hmm. uh the past pastor and one person went out with them and they were stopping at homes and they actually stopped at this home where this woman i think spoke 
possibly German, and neither of of them knew German at all. There you go. And they started, and and they were there, and they were trying to, you know, uh, talk to her about God, etc. And all of a sudden, the girl started doing tongues out of nowhere, and the woman started understanding in her native language what she was saying. And there you go. A conversation going back and forth, and I. I thought you might want to hear that. Yes, yeah, that's how he operates, exactly. Uh, another thing is that a lot of time when you don't have the most perfect uh, prayer, right. to sit sit there and do tongues is a very good thing to do because yes. it creates the most perfect prayer to God mm -hmm. when you can't think of what to say. Right. And that's another purpose for that. Right. Because the Holy Spirit is interceding for you and he knows how to mm -hmm. pray according to the will of God. Right. Excellent. Exactly. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes.